Hi everyone, today I'm going to take you through a quick little model in Blender that I'm doing to basically just show you the whole process from start to finish of uh, bringing in your basic shapes, modeling, adding textures, rendering, all that kind of thing. Instead of little individual videos, I thought I'd do a, a bit of a project for you today uh, to show you a little bit of a workflow as well. So what I'm going to be doing is modeling up the Deluminator from Harry Potter. Pretty simple model, a uh, nice kind of beginner's model to make in Blender. It's going to use a little bit of modeling skills. We're going to be using some modifiers and of course we'll then texture and render as well. So I'm in Blender 2.9. 2.8 will be absolutely fine. If you're still using 2.7, I would heavily re recommend updating. Uh, because of all the new features that were introduced in the 2.8 update. So, first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to delete everything I've got here. My camera, my default cube and my light. I'm just going to delete all of that. Nice blank space. I'll bring in the camera and the light source a little later on. Next thing I want to do is bring in this image to work off. Because I'm going to bring in the blueprint and start using that to model up the basic form. So what I'm going to do is, in, I've got the gyro in the top corner here, and if I click on any one of these letters, it'll snap the viewport to that axis, and it'll remove all the perspective as well, so it's great for this kind of modeling. So I'm going to click on the X, it flattens everything, and then I'm going to go down into my directory, drag and drop my image into my space. And you can see now that it's perfectly standing up, and orientated to the y-axis there. So what I can do is, once this image is in, I can edit it like any other, so I can type S to scale, and I'm gonna make it reasonably big. G to grab, S again to scale. I'm gonna use this first image here. I'm gonna draw the deluminator closed, uh, just for the sake of time. There we go, and that line I'm guessing is halfway like so. Wonderful. Okay, so there's my model. Now, as you can see, it's pretty much symmetrical top to bottom. There's a few little details on the lid where the uh, deluminator opens, but for the most part, it's symmetrical. So I'm actually just going to model the, uh, the bottom half, and I'm going to use the mirror modifier to basically save myself a lot of time. So let's go to add in the top left-hand corner, go to mesh, and we're going to add in a cylinder. And looking at the plan, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine sides to this. So in the left hand corner here, bottom left hand corner, you can see that now I've added that cylinder, I've got a little tab that says add cylinder in the corner. If I click on that, it opens a menu and there's a few things we can change about that cylinder right from the get go. First of all is vertices, so I need nine sides. So I'm going to change this number from 32 to nine and hit enter and you can see there we now have nine sides to our mesh so let's start editing this um, first of all we need to get the width correct so I'm going to click on the model and scale it by typing S and scale it down roughly to something like that I'm going to snap my oh uh, which one there we go I uh, just need to move it around so I'm going to type G and S, just a little bit more. I'm going to type G and then Z to just drag it straight down, lock it to that Z axis. So then I can just model the, the bottom here. I'm going to leave a little bit of a gap. That 3D cursor there, this black cross with the red and white dashed line, that actually marks the uh, horizon of my workspace um, when you first start Blender. You can actually see the grid as well. I'm gonna move my model just slightly below and that'll make sense when we add the modifier. So let's start sculpting this out. So let's click on the uh, cylinder, which we've got here, so it's orange. And then top left, let's go to edit mode. Everything goes orange, that means it's selected. A is your key to um, select everything and then you just click off to deselect. A will select all. Uh, I've just jumped back out, so let's go to edit mode. Okay, let's select the face at the bottom by going to face select. These three little icons here determine all of that. So the last one is face select. I'm just going to click on the bottom face. Snap my 
gyro back so we're facing straight on and I'm just going to type G and then Z to grab that and bring it straight down like so next thing I'm going to do is start modeling all of this and it's going to be a lot easier if I can actually see the blueprint through the model here and to do that we need to turn on x-ray and that's in the top right you see we've got these four orbs here and to the left we've got these two squares behind each other when you hover over it says toggle x-ray and you just click on that and suddenly you can see the drawing below so now I can start sculpting this so I'm just going to move that up a bit because I'm imagining we've got a little bevel here the drawing's not the best of quality but it's certainly something we can use uh, S to scale uh, E to extrude S to scale and then I think there's a bit of a crease here if I remember rightly so we're going to do E S uh, no we're not we're going to do uh, hit escape to cancel that we're going to do E again and E S E, S again, E, just constantly type in E to extrude and S to scale to build up the form here. I'm getting the overall shape. I'm not putting in too many subdivisions. I can control all that later on. There we go. Even though I'm doing a prop, um, this is actually applicable to an environment, an interior, uh, a character, sculpt, anything. You can basically block out your basic shape. If you're making a character, you can block up your block out your basic shape very easily with this method and then jump in sculpt mode and start sculpting on top. Okay, uh, let's toggle x-ray back on. I'm pretty happy with what we've got there. I think that looks legit. Um, I just need to create the little indent here. That's why I put that extra line there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on one of those lines using edge select remember to toggle between those. And if I hold down Alt and click towards the end of that line, it will select all those lines connected in a big loop. So it saves you sort of moving around the model and moving each individual one. I'm going to type S and bring that in like so. Okay, now if I bring X-ray back on, what I'm going to do is mirror this. So I don't have to model the top and any changes I make to the bottom will be carried to the top as well. So I'm going to select the bottom half that I've just modeled. I'm going to go to the modifiers panel, which is this blue spanner here on the right hand side. And I'm going to click on add modifier. In the second column, about halfway down, there's an option that says mirror. Now, depending on what you've modeled and where you've modeled it, something may happen or it may not. And it's just a matter of playing around. So currently I'm mirroring on the X axis and you can't see any difference. Well, there won't be because currently I'm bang on the middle of the X axis. So mirroring, it's just flipping it on itself. Um, if I type G on the Y axis, you can start to see some changes being made. If I grab on the X axis, You can see some of the changes again carrying over. And if I undo all of that, you'll also notice that I'm not actually mirroring across the axis. So imagine if there was a mirror right here. Uh, there's nothing appearing here. And the one reason for that is you see this orange dot in the center of my object. That is marking the center of my object. So that's currently what I'm reflecting on. If you want to reflect on the other side, say if you'd modeled a leg of a character and you wanted to mirror to the other side, then what you need to do is you need to right click, go to set origin, 
and choose any one of these which is applicable to you. Now there's my 3D cursor. So what I might want to do is go to set origin and move origin to 3D cursor. And you'll now see that orange dot has snapped to the 3D cursor there. And now when I apply my modifier, in this case the Y, uh, it mirrors on the Y axis. Uh, I always get confused actually. Yeah, it makes sense that the mirror should be here, but actually it goes by the axis it's parallel to. So there we go. And the bonus of this is that obviously now, if I go to edit mode and I grab this, just this edge here, you can see that it applies to the mirrored object. And you can mirror any number of ways as well. So we can mirror on the Z, we can mirror on the X, which at this point isn't um, doing anything. Let's see if we can make it. Uh, grab. Ah, it's moved the, it's moved the origin as well. So I'd have to re-snap that to the 3D cursor. Okay, uh, let's actually undo all of that. Because I just want it mirroring on the Z. So what I'm going to do is type Z. Uh, and actually before that I need to set the origin to 3D cursor again. And now type Z and there we go. And you can see that gap that I left. Uh, initially when I moved my model down and there's a reason for that but I go to edit mode and I go to face select and select the top face let's snap my view to the front I'm going to type G and Z and you can see that as I grab that face it merges with the top object the mirrored object and if I clicked now basically that will glitch through There'll be two meshes overlapping each other, and that is not a good thing uh, for texturing or for uh, things like 3D printing. What I want to do, so I'm just going to type escape to undo all of that. On the right-hand side in the mirror modifier, you can see there's an option that says clipping. And if I turn that on, and now I type G and Z again, you can see that I can only grab it so far. Once it hits the opposite mesh, it stops, which means there's no overlapping, and I've got nice clean geometry. Going to click, and there we have it. There is my model. So let's go to object mode. Just having a swig of coffee there. And what should we do next? Well, our mesh is quite clunky at the moment. This is what you should always do when you start off modeling, uh, especially if you're sculpting, actually. Keep the mesh low. We can make it more and more detailed as and when we need. But always start off low, especially if you're on a lower spec PC. Blender works absolutely fine on lower end PCs, as long as you keep aware of the amount of polygons you've got going on. So the polygons, these individual faces here. You may see if you download models, a uh, statistic called poly count when you download it. That's what it's referring to, the number of faces. So let's play around with this. Let's go to modifier. And let's go down to subdivision surface in the second column to add a bit of something to this. And there we go. My mesh is now a lot more detailed. However, some of the form that we wanted has been lost ever so slightly. So let's go out and bring that in. Uh, I might subdivide it twice. If I go to viewport, yeah, that's good. I sh certainly shouldn't need to subdivide that any further. Um, there's a lot of faces here to sculpt with, and if I wanted that any smoother, what I'd actually do is just right-click and go to Shade Smooth uh, to bring that up. Don't worry about this going on here. Um, that's perfectly, perfectly fine. Uh, we'll fix that later on. That's just the mirror modifier. Okay, let's go to Edit Mode. And you can see that although we've subdivided it, because we haven't applied this modifier, which we would do by going to this little drop-down menu and clicking Apply, because we haven't applied it, we can actually see the original mesh on top of it in wireframe, which means we can very easily still edit this. So I'm going to go to Edge Select. And the first thing is, this main body here is um, quite sharp. It's got sharp creases, sharp corners, and we want to keep those. We don't want them smooth as we can see here. In order to do that, there's two methods. One, you could add a loop cut. And if I go up to the left-hand toolbar here, you can see I've got loop cut. I'm going to click on that. 
When I hover over my model, you can see yellow lines appearing, and these are effectively cutting my model in half. What I can do to get a sharp corner here along the bottom is just click and drag it down and you can see that as I pull the geometry closer and closer the corner gets tighter and tighter. Now we're going to do that in just a little bit but what we're actually going to do is we're going to tackle these side edges first. Go to select and we want those to be sharp so what we're going to do is I'm going to select those holding shift going all the way around to make these sharp what I could do is it's almost minuscule you can barely see it there's a tiny little tab in the top right hand corner and if I click on that it brings up this little sub menu tiny tiny little tab you may never have seen it before when I click on that I get item and I get transform and the only thing we're fussed about here is where it says mean crease with those lines selected, if I now click on Mean Crease and type 1 and hit Enter, you can see that those lines suddenly become sharp. There's a sharp crease created. So it basically overrides the subdivision surface modifier for that particular geometry. In this case, the lines we've just selected. So this is a really good way of sharpening up your model if it's subdivided in an area you don't want. And this is the method I prefer in many cases because you're not adding any more geometry to it. With the loop cut, you are adding more faces technically because you're dividing the mesh. With this, you're keeping it at the exact same polycam. Okay, so I'm happy with that. I'm going to have some nice hard edges to that. And what I'm going to do is now bring in... Um, actually, no, whilst we're on mean crease, let's sort out this area here. I want this to be quite nice and sharp. So I'm going to hold down Alt and select all those edges, hold down Alt and select all these, and the same for the interior, which I can't quite get to. There we go. Select all those, mean crease, type 1, hit Enter, and now they're nice and sharp. I'm quite happy with that. Okay. Let's add a loop cut to the bottom here, because I actually want the bottom to be ever so slightly rounded. So let's get the loop cut tool and drag those down. Wonderful. I think this line that I put in earlier is conflicting with that a little bit. So I'm going to hold down Alt and click all those edges. I'm going to type scale, just to curve. Curve that in a bit. Might be that. Might put another loop cut just to sharpen it up a little bit more. That's better. That's much better. There we go. Just rounded ever so slightly. Grab that on the Z. that yeah I'm happy with that that'll certainly do for now um, and then on the top you should have seen that carried over which it has so all the changes we've just made have been carried over here you see that sharp line there so let's keep going let's um, there's a bit of a flick to this so let's bring that down and let's Scale that up. Is that a bit too much, I reckon? Yes. Uh, loop cut. I'm going to add one right in here. And scale it in. Now, I think this should go um, pretty sharp. So, what I might do is just... Bring in a loop cut there and towards the bottom as well. And you see now that's a lot straighter. Uh, that's curved. That's curved as well. And just 
creating more of a ridge as opposed to this curved line at the top. There we go. You ever add something that you don't like as well? It's just Control Z to undo it. Uh, Command Z if you're on a Mac, I believe. There we go. Let's go to object mode and see how that looks. I'm pretty... Yeah, I'm happy with that. I think that looks okay. And the top's rounded enough, I think. There we go. So there's my model. Uh, let's go to edit mode again. And let's sort out these interior faces. So I'm pretty happy that there's no more changes to be made. So now I'm going to apply the modifier. So um, mirror modifier, let's apply that. And subdivision, we don't need to apply that yet at all. So let's go to edit mode. And you see now that my entire model is editable. So if I want to make any changes, they won't be mirrored to the bottom. Make sure that you're fully aware you don't need to make any further changes before you apply the modifier. Now, as you can see, um, well, as you could see previously with the uh, mirror modifier, uh, there was some weird shading going on here. What we're going to do is going to select all these edges here. There we go. We're going to type X and delete those edges and it deletes the whole uh, interior there. You see my image here, it's making things a little confusing so I'm going to go up to my layers panel and the empty is the image so I'm just going to toggle that on and off. Now the reason we got a little bit of weird kind of shadowing going on is because if I go to edge select you can see that these two lines are split in two and we want those to be one continuous line. So I'm actually going to select all those, type X and delete those edges as well. So now I've got two separate objects. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this top line here and its corresponding bottom line and type F to make a new face. I'm going to go around and add those in one by one. Now you can see that the edge is now slightly curving. Well, that's because of my subdivision modifier and I haven't added the mean crease onto these edges. You can tell because they'd be pink if they have been. So don't worry about that for now. I'm just gonna type F to make this a little bit cleaner. Like so, lovely. And then go back and select all those edges which would be quicker with the X-ray modifier. There we go. Mean crease, type one, and there we go. There's your face back. And now there won't be any problem with uh, texturing or uh, any glitches with the mesh or anything like that. So if we go to object mode, there is my deluminator. And if I right click and shade smooth, we can get a sense of what the top's gonna look like. You see that when I shaded smooth as well, it smoothed the edges here. Even though they're sharp, they look smooth. And uh, that can be a little irritating if you just want a preview like this. So what you can do is if you go to this green triangle on the right hand side, it's called Object Data Properties. When you click on that, go to this tab where it says Normals. And you see you've got an option called Auto Smooth. If you select that, it will kind of read the geometry that you've made and smooth it, smooth it in a more realistic way. Basically, you can control the degrees to control how harsh an angle you want to smooth. So if I drag this up and down, you can see that it slowly changes how much it smooths over. And I reckon I'm fine with that for now. It looks, it looks a bit big on the top. Have I modeled that right? Let's have a look. Turn on X-ray. No, it needs to be... Oh no, so it's fine on the bottom. Okay, so let's just go to edit mode and bring some of those lines out. So I'm going to hold shift and select both of those. Scale. I'm going to make aware of the number, which you can see in the top left-hand corner. Uh, I can't really point to it as I'm scaling, but you should be able to see it. And that's 1.0, let's make it 1.08, hit enter. And the reason I'm making a note of that number is so I can apply it to the top now that I haven't got the mirror modifier. So scale, 
1.08. Let's scale this one as well. 1.04 uh, It looks a little better Yeah, I don't think we're far off though Okie doke So there is our modelled prop and as I said, you can use this process to start pretty much any model that you've got. Remember that I only applied the mirror modifier. I haven't applied the subdivision surface modifier. And I, to be honest, in most cases, I wouldn't because if I go to edit mode, it's so much easier to edit this mesh uh, than if I applied the subdivision surface because my polygon count will just go through the roof. Okie doke. So we can now go on to texturing, but for this model, we go back to the image. You can see I've got two textures. I've got the malachite texture for the main body, and I've got the silver texture for the ends, the lid, and the little switch there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna split my model into three pieces. So it's gonna be a little easier to texture. So currently everything is one model, it's a cylinder. That's all I've got. How do I go about splitting this into three? What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to edit mode. I'm going to snap my view so we're facing front on. And I'm going to turn on x-ray. Because if I drag and select, you can see that x-ray means I've selected all the geometry front and behind. If I disable x-ray and drag a selection box, I only select what I can see. So x-ray is very useful in that respect. Okay, let's go back to the image. Where does the malachite texture stop? It stops just on that ridge that I made earlier. So let's select everything that's above the ridge. Oh, actually, I'm in edge select here. I need to go to face select. I'm going to drag that over like so. Wonderful. And let's... Uh, I've actually missed the... That right yes it is i just got that little sliver there what i'm going to do is i'm going to type p on my keyboard you see a little window comes up that says separate basically what i want to do everything i've selected i want to separate into a new object so i'm going to type p to separate and then i'm going to click selection here you see it goes gray and then in my layers panel i now have cylinder and cylinder zero zero one I'm going to go to the bottom as well and basically do the exact same thing. Wonderful. P and by selection. And now I have cylinder 002. So if I go to object mode, I'll turn off x-ray, I now have three separate objects. And you don't need to worry about any modifiers for the most part um, or anything like that. Because if I grab this, you can see that everything has been perfectly cut in two. So if you're wanting to 3D print, for example, and the model that you're making is too big for the printer, or you want to print it in separate little, little pieces, sorry, just model it all in, in one, and then we can use the separate by selection tool to basically split it all apart. And uh, this is why I recommend most people to sculpt out of one object um, and to build everything out of one object if they can, uh, and if it's practical. Uh, because we can always separate things later. Okay, so there is my model split into three parts, so I can now apply the silver texture to the top, the silver texture at the bottom, and the malachite texture to the middle. Okay, so let's start off by adding the malachite texture to the cylinder in the center here. So what I've done is I've downloaded a uh, a couple of different textures, uh, one that is slightly lower resolution, I'm not quite sure how that's going to turn out, one that's higher resolution but it's not quite what we've got going on on the actual deluminator, you see it's all one continuous texture. So we'll give both a go. So these are just JPEGs that I've downloaded from uh, Google Images. How do we bring those into Blender? What I'm going to do is at the top of my screen I've got an option that says UV editing and if I click on that basically brings up this little square box here, all these kind of graphs going on. I'm just going to zoom in on my 3D window that's still open on the right hand side. 
To add a new texture to this, what I'm going to do is click open on this folder and go to my downloads and basically find wherever that image is. And I think it's called something like that. Let's open this. There we go. There's my texture. Now, nothing's applying. What we're doing is basically this is a preview. We're, we're setting up our texture. Nothing's going to appear here just yet. What I can do is see where it's going to fall on my model. So if I type A in the 3D window to select everything, you can see this net appears. I don't know if in primary school, you know, you had nets that you made out of paper, cut them out, then you glued all the tabs to turn them into a 3D shape. That's effectively what's going on here. Now, first things first is whatever net appears in here first time is not the net of the object you've made. This is the net of the default object. So for example, the cylinder that I started out with, it doesn't appear here just yet. So what I need to do is I need to add some seams to this, uh, this body of the deluminator here, basically where I'd cut with some scissors to unwrap it. And it's really straightforward to do. I'm just gonna get my edge select tool, gonna hold down Alt, and select a load of lines up one side of the model. Right click and go down about two thirds of the way to where it says mark seam. And you see that those lines then change color. They've got a red outline to them. That's my seam. That's gonna allow me to unwrap this. And unwrapping is really straightforward. Type A to select everything again. Go to UV at the top of the 3D window here on this long set of options. And the first option, unwrap. So now you can see that I've got the net on the left hand side. It's much more realistic. This is the actual net of this object. And you can kind of make it out the panels on the side here and where it curves in and starts coming up towards the lid. You can see those lines here. So what this allows me to do is now type A in the UV window. Everything goes orange to show it's been selected. And I can type G to grab this, S to scale. Um, what this will do is that texture will then change accordingly in the 3D window. And it'll a little make, make a little more sense once we actually apply the texture. So what we'll do is we'll go back to layout view, which is at the top here. And what we're gonna do is at the timeline on the bottom, just gonna drag that up ever so slightly. This is our timeline timeline for animating, sorry. And what I'm gonna do is where you see the little clock here, if you click on that, that's gonna bring up all your different windows. And we're gonna to go to the first column about two thirds of the way down to where it says shader editor. And it brings up another little kind of graph area similar to the UV editor. Basically this is where my materials are and it allows me to customize everything about a certain material. It's one of the most useful things about Blender. Here we can see we've got add new. I wanna add a new material obviously. So I'm gonna click on that and I get these two little boxes pop up. I'm just going to drag that up so it's a little easier to see. What's going on here is we've got principled BSDF, that's our first node, and we've got material output, which is our second node. The material output is basically what do we end up with, so that's just, that's just its own thing, really. The principled BSDF allows us to change loads of basic settings about our material right from the get-go. But to be honest, we're not really fussed about any of these at the moment. We just want to bring our image in. So I'm going to click on add at the top of this work frame. I'm going to type search. I'm going to search image because I want to bring in an image texture. I want to bring in a JPEG. When I click on the only option I get, I get a new node that I can drag around. Um, there's no right or wrong when it comes to organizing all these nodes. It can get pretty hectic. Um, you, you organize them how you like. We're only fussed about the links here, these lines connecting them all. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click open. I'm gonna find that same texture I just brought into the UV window. There we go. That now loads up in my node. And all I have to do to bring this into here is drag a line from color to base color in the principled BSDF. Nothing changes, that's because we're in our solid view. What that means is if you type Z on your keyboard, you see you get four basically previews of your model. You get a solid view, which is all gray and allows you to just model. 
Material Preview will show you any materials you've applied. Rendered will show those in realistic settings. You know, it will bring in your light sources, your HDRIs, any effects that you've created. Wireframe does exactly that. It's just a wireframe. So if I go to Material Preview, you can now see that my texture's been applied with what I've done in the shader editor here. Okay, so I've just loaded up my image by going to Add, Search, Image Texture, bring in the node and open up the image that you've downloaded, connect it to base color. That's all you have to do. So now I've added that, what I can do is go to the UV editing, back to the UV editor at the top of the screen, type Z in the 3D viewport to go back to material preview. And look what happens when I do what we did earlier, when I scale, when I grab it, R to rotate, you can see that my material now changes. So it's a little bit of reverse. Instead of moving the texture, you're actually moving the object. And that will change what part of the texture we can see, which is obviously great if you're bringing in any graphics. So let's go back to layout view and let's go into the principal BSDF and let's change a few of these. You know, let's have a bit of fun with this. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to type Z and go to rendered view. There's a lot of traffic noise today. Uh, let's go to rendered view and I've got no lights in my scene, remember? Um, I got rid of those right at the start. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to add, bring in a light and we'll just bring in... Uh, no, we won't bring in the sun, actually. We'll add in a point light. And we're going to grab it. Let's grab it on the x-axis. Grab it on the z. And then in our light panel, which is this little green bulb on the right-hand side, we're going to bump up the power to... Something like that. Let's make it nice and strong. Okay, are we in render view? Yes, we are. Uh, so what I can do in my shader editor is, okay, let's change some things. In the image, it's glossy. In fact, it's really smooth, so I think gloss is the only thing we need to change. So what I can do is go down to uh, clear coat, which is basically your gloss, and I'm going to bump that up. And then I'm also, where it says roughness, currently that's halfway filled. So I'm going to drag that down. And you should be able to see that gloss really coming through now. You see here this highlight. As I drag roughness up and down, it changes. I don't want it too smooth. Let's go for something like that. It'll like make a little bit more sense when we bring in the HDR. Uh, but I'm happy with that for now. In fact, let's bring in the HDR. Let's see what we've got. So HDR file, I've got a separate little video for that uh, on my channel. So go and check that out. It's really quick. I'm just going to quickly uh, bring it in now. Uh, documents, assets. Let's just open a studio. There we go. So with the HDR, you can now see that gloss really having an effect. Nice and smooth much more realistic lighting there. Okay, let's add the silver to the top and the bottom. So, let's go to the... Uh... Now, let's add it in, in... Let's do it in reverse. Let's add in uh, the texture at the bottom. So, we're going to add new. Uh, we've got the principal BSDF and the material output. And let's bring in some texture maps. So, this was just the JPEG, the Malachite. We just brought in one image. We're actually going to go and bring in some texture maps to create something a bit more realistic for the uh, metal. So let's go online. So let's go to uh, one of my favorite sites for textures, which is Polygon. A few different sites that you can find on my uh, Moodle page and the model making page under technical resources. Uh, but this is one of my favorites because there's quite a few PBR textures for free. 
What do we mean by PBR textures? So if I click on any one of these that comes up here, you see that we've got a long list of maps. So these are all individual JPEGs. And each one of these carries some different data uh, for the materials. So some of them will make it uh, 3D, some of them will give it a bumpiness, some will make it glossy, uh, give it reflections. And you layer these up to create a more realistic image. Instead of just putting a JPEG on whatever it is you're making, which will be really flat, it'll be matte, it's effectively like wallpaper. PBR textures give it a realistic quality and create the qualities of the actual texture. So if we go to Polygon and I'm going to look for a metal texture, I'm going to scroll down and select free. And let's go for this one here. That actually looks not too far off. Uh, this kind of chipped texture that we've got going on here. Uh, so let's download that. So I'm going to click on that. There we go. And uh, you can see that we've got all the texture maps. You can select them to, uh, you know, if you don't want to download some, but I would recommend doing so. And then you just click on download. I've actually already downloaded this. So we're going to go to my uh, directory and try and find that. Uh, there we go, that's a texture there. And you can see that when I open up the folder, I have all those maps available. And let's go through them. So we've got the color map, first of all, which is what the texture looks like. It brings in the color. We've got metalness, which will add in the metal qualities, you know, the shine, the tint. I've got displacement maps, which will add some 3D information to it. I've got the normal maps, which are also known as our bump maps, which make the surface look bumpy instead of perfectly flat and digital. And we've got roughness, which is the same sort of thing. So what we're going to do in Blender, I basically need to import these maps. And it's exactly the same thing as what we did with the Malachite. We're just importing more than one. So we're going to add, we're going to search for image texture, bring that in. And I'm going to bring in four of the maps. I'm going to bring in the color map. I'm going to bring in the metalness map, the normal, and the roughness. So I'm going to shift D to duplicate and get four of those ready to go. And I'm going to open up each one in turn. So I'm going to open that and bring in the color map. Open this one and bring in the... Uh, which one? Metalness map. Open this one and bring in the uh, normal map. And the final one is going to be the uh, roughness. Did I open up the roughness? No, I didn't. There we go. Okay, so we've got the four maps there. If things get confusing, you can always close down the menus like so. Uh, I'm just going to bump that up like so. Drag these up. There we are. Okay. And let's in the 3D window type Z and go to material preview so we can see what we're doing live. So the first one, the color, I'm going to drag the color to the base color there. And there's my texture. I'm going to drag the uh, metalness um, map to metallic. I'm going to drag the, uh, is this the normal map or the, I can't remember what it was. Uh, yes, it is the normal map. So the normal map's a little different. You see here we've got normal and it's got a purple icon. We can't link a yellow icon to a purple one. So we just need to add a little intermediary there. I'm going to go to add, search, and search for normal. And we're going to go to normal map. And it brings up this little node that then allows us to link the color to color and normal to normal. And then there's that data loaded up. Now, I actually don't want this to bring in any color data. So you see the color map brings in the color of the material. Any maps that don't add color, which usually are all the others, you want to change where it says color space to non-color, like so. So it's not interfering with any of the texture. And the last one is our roughness. Uh, if we drag that down there, we can bring this up and we can link it to roughness like so. Okay, so there is our material loaded up. So 
all the different texture maps, they aren't complicated. You're just linking up the names to their corresponding values in the principal BSDF. Okay, so now we need to unwrap this so it isn't stretched like so and it looks a bit more realistic. So we're going to go to the UV editing panel at the top and we're going to click A to select everything and we're going to add in a new uh, texture, which in this case is going to be the colour map that we started off with, like so. Let's open that and there's our texture. Now again, this is not the net of the object we've got here. We do not have one panel with the top, we've got lots of different panels. So we need to add in a split just as we did before. And I think it was along this line, so we'll make the split here the same as well. We're going to select the lines, click Alt, and we're going to split that up like that. Right click, we're going to go to Mark Scene. A to select everything, UV at the top, Unwrap. And you can see we've got something a little bit better. You can see there the texture is mapping much better. It's a little pixelated, so I might type S in the uh, 3D window, uh, not 3D window, the UV window here. Type S just to um, scale it down ever so slightly, like so. Okay, and then if we go back to object mode, back to layout, you can see that material there. And you see it's got all the metallic qualities that we wanted. Uh, how shiny is that? Is, does it, need to be, it needs to be a bit shinier actually uh, on that model. So what I'm going to do in the BSDF, I'm just going to bump up the clear coat ever so slightly. And there we go. Now, I don't need to go through all that for the uh, bottom one, because I've made that material once, actually where it says next to new I've got this little sphere, if I click on that you can see I've got material 2, so I just click on that and there's my material applied, I do need to UV unwrap it though, so back to UV editing, A to select everything, apply a new seam, A, UV unwrap, 